you have to know the dress code for your mind. There's a dress code for your mind. Your mind has a dress code. The same way when you go to work, there's a certain dress code for your mind. There's a dress code in the spirit, and that's so powerful. There is a dress code in the spirit realm. Remember, Samson's dress code in the spirit realm was don't cut his hair. Wow. This was his dress code. The dress code was don't tell anyone the secret of your strength. That was the dress code. The dress code was don't drink any strong drink. That was the dress code. Find out the dress code for your mind. Because once you find out the dress code for your mind, this is going to develop your highest levels of productivity with God. And you're going to have successful days. Don't aim at a successful year. Aim at a successful day. Don't look to tomorrow while leaving today unattended. Wow. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. These are wisdom doors that I'm giving you that are, 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 are very important. It's thrilling. It's thritrosis. It's tritondo. It's gruff. It's a rofis. It's imagian. Heller, y'all still on the line or not? <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's how people act when you ask them for two dollars and they, they don't want to give it to you. They act like they have reception bad. Hey, hello, and you still. <laughs> I know that's you, Leroy. You're over there doing it. Yeah, because one of them spitballs hit. <laughs> one of them spitballs hit my eye when you was up there. <laughs> One of them spitballs, I felt it. And whoever felt it, dealt it. <laughs> God has a dress code for your mind every single day. God has a, <laughs> God has a dress code for your thoughts. And if you don't put those clothes on, the devil is going to shame you. How does the devil really shame you? Is have your mind miss mental schedules. Think about that. When your mind miss mental schedules, so does your decision miss decisional schedules. Mary Magdalene kept the dress code of her mind. She had seven devils. They were owning her dress code. Mentally, her dress code was these seven devils. They had rulership over her. Why did she have seven devils? Because she had seven wicked spirits operating in her. That was the same teaching that Jesus began to share with the people. She had that. She was getting worse and worse and worse. She had seven devils because that seven represented that Satan released the completion of the demonic in her. So this woman was very evil. This woman was very destructive. She was very dark. Because she had the fullness of Satan operating in her. My God, think about that. Mary Magdalene had the fullness of Satan operating in her. She was full of demons. The fact that she had seven more wicked spirits... She had those seven spirits. Those was the seven more wicked spirits that Jesus had warned could return to your house. So, so she was really Satan's top woman. Mary Magdalene got delivered. And when she got delivered, now she goes from the seven wicked spirits to now she has the seven spirits of God. How do I know that? Because the Lord said it to me. 
This is why he appears to her first when he raises from hell. She's the first person he wants to talk to. This is Jesus's top person. You imagine Peter came secondarily. Remember, Jesus said, go tell Peter and the disciples. As a matter of fact, I'm hearing the Lord say the reason why I said tell Peter, because I know Peter was a little distraught. He felt like he failed me. He felt like it was over for him. So I had her give the message, tell Peter so that Peter can feel a little confidence with me again. Because Peter thought that was the end of the world for him. And we see the beauty of Jesus in that. Because he singled him out. It wasn't that he was at his finest, but the Lord wanted him to feel as if the recovery was possible. But Mary Magdalene switched dress codes in her mind. She switched dress codes in her mind. She put on a different garment mentally. Her mind left those seven devils and stepped into God's seven levels. So Mary Magdalene, she took on the new garments, the garments of praise, the garments of worship, the garments of submission, the garments of obedience, the garments of diligence, the garments of unity with the Lord. You have to do that same thing every moment of your life. You have to make sure that your garments are not filthy garments. They're not garments that are going to lead you back into the very things that you have come out of. Because there was something that Mary Magdalene showed that once she got delivered, she never went back. She never went back. When Mary Magdalene got set free, she never returned back. Why did Jesus tell the woman con the act of adultery? Why did he tell her go in peace and sin no more? He was telling her, I just placed new garments on in your mind. I've given you a new dress code. Don't go search for the dress code that was yesterday. Today I've given you a new dress code. When God gives you a new dress code, don't go shop at the thrift store because the thrift store is full of spirits. Don't go wear your old garments. Some of you all have had clothes since 2016, 2015. Oh, I pray that you throw away that dustiness. Oh, Lord, I pray that. Oh, my God. You still got coffee stains on it. You still got nail polish on it. You still got that edge by your ankles where, where, where it looked like a rat nibbled at the hem of your garment down there. Look like a rat nibbled down there by your ankles and you try to act like it's a style. That ain't no style. You try to act like you with the hipster, like you went go shop at Aeropostale. You didn't shop, you didn't shop at no Aeropostale. That, that, that ain't no American Eagle. You need to throw that away now. Throw that away. Get out of the way, boy. If your pajamas <laughs> look like it was worn by your great, great, great grandmamas, you're going to have to throw that stuff away. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. I know it feel comfortable, but just let it go. You can't keep holding on. Now, this your daddy talking. You can't keep wearing them same panties. I'm going to tell you. Now, nah, nah, I got it. Don't try it. Nah, nah, this the daddy talking. This daddy talking. You can't be wearing them same panties. Get you some new panties. If you got to pay two, three dollars more, get you some new panties. You can't keep wearing that same bra that don't strap up in the back. You can't keep doing it to yourself. It's, it, it it got too much of years ago on it. You can't. 
<laughs> you you got to throw them boxes away. When 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 the logo on the boxes, we don't see Tommy Hill figure logo no longer. The logo is gone. You got to have to throw that away. You going to have to throw that away real quick. When when the when we can't see, when we can't see that is a Hanes shirt. When the Hanes done faded, it's time to throw that thing away. It's time to throw it away. All right? Because if your Hanes, if your boxers, if your socks got holes in the back and you try to act like it's a sandal sock, it's not a sandal sock. That sock just finished. Let it go. Let it go. You can't. You can't hold on to garments too long, even natural garments. You got to let them go because they carry memories. Do you know that I don't watch certain broadcasts that I've done in the past? Because the broadcast was done during a time of my life that. that I don't I don't I don't I don't, I don't want to be there. You don't want to hold on to anything too long. Why do you think that God have you sow seeds? Because he don't even want you to hold on to money too long. When you hold on to things too long, you release a presence. You release a spirit that you don't want. Sometimes you don't know why your thoughts is still in 2009, 2005. Because you got garments from 2005 still with you. You got pictures from 2005 still with you. And so those demons that fought you in 2005 will still bother you in 2020. Some of those spirits that had control over your life. When you were 13. You don't want to keep a, a bracelet that you had when you was 13 because it'll link you to that time. If you're saved and you used to smoke weed in that garment, throw that garment away. If you got to wear your same clothes and wash it <laughs> and wring it with your hands, you know, bring it here and bring it there. If you don't got to wash it and dry at your place, if you don't got to wash it and dry at your place and you got to wring it there and, and scrub it, and and hang it up by the window for a couple couple for about forty five minutes. That is better than you holding on to a garment that you used to use while you was doing while you was using. If you know that you sniff crack with that shirt, don't have that shirt on while you praying in tongues. Because garments carry presence. Thoughts carry presence. And the fact that our thoughts need to be clothed, the thoughts need to be covered, the thoughts need a dress. That's why your address is your thoughts. It shows you that even there's natural garments that can release presence as well was the reason why Apostle Paul was able to release his handkerchiefs and aprons and it drove out evil spirits because he had the presence of his anointing, the presence of his ministry, the presence of his angels, the presence of God that was with him, the level. It was on those garments. That atmosphere was there. So those demons that were inside of people ran when they saw the presence of God around those garments. Now, I want to say this. Those demons ran when they saw the presence of Paul on those garments. Because what the Lord is telling me, remember, it said, Paul, I know and Jesus, I know. If it was just Jesus, I know we would say it's just the presence of Jesus. No, they saw the presence of Paul, the presence of your man of God. When they have walked the Jesus walk. And they have inaug been inaugurated by the father to play Jesus. 
They've been inaugurated by the Father. They've been elected by the Father to play Jesus. They have a presence that scares demons out of your life. That's why demons tell you not to listen to them. That's why demons say, get away from their ministry. That's why demons say, don't, 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 don't sow no seed into them. That's why demons do that. Because demons know that if you stay connected to our presence, that they will not be able to have a delay or a foothold or a stronghold on your eternity. Now you know why demons are strategic, why, why they tell you, get away, get away. Don't, don't, don't listen to, to this one. Don't, don't, don't follow. Because it's either you're going to leave your man of God and they stay to take you to hell. Or you stay with your man of God and they have to leave and go back to hell. Oh, my God. Did you did you hear what I just said? Either they are going to get you to leave your man of God and they take you to hell. Or you stay with your man of God and they have to go back to hell. Demons are very tricky. They are very tricky. The same way God sows the word into you, there are demons that are sent to sow the word into you as well. That's why the Bible said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. The counsel of the ungodly, these are people that are empowered and anointed by Satan to sow the word into you as well. It's all about knowing the dress code for your mind. Elisha knew that his dress code was just to listen to Elijah. Elijah said, I'm going here. You're going to stay right here. He said, no, no, no. Elijah, I hear you, but this is not a part of the dress code that God put inside of my mind. I'm going with you. No, no, no. I, I know that you said that this is a new year and you're preaching this, but I'm going with you while you preach it. I'm going to say something tonight that's shocking. I know that this vision is going to be shocking to you because it's shocking to me. But it's an encounter that I've had hours ago. Hours ago. And even when I, uh, even when I begin to move around, this encounter stayed. And it's still on me. And it's still with me. Become fascinated with the spirit world of the Lord Jesus. Become fascinated because there's so many angels. There's so many abilities that you have that you have not walked in yet. But this is the time for you to no longer let people, things, circumstances take you away from God's will. This is the time for it. This, this is the time. You have to start saying this in 2020. I'm not going to let things, people, circumstances distract me from the Lord Jesus this year. I'm not going to let it happen. If me, and you be honest, if you look back at your life, look at the years before. Satan always knew how to send something to distract you from Jesus. If you look at your life, it's not that you don't have certain things because God don't want to give it to you. There's some things you don't have because right before you possess it. Another report reporting live from the CNN of Satan. It takes you out of it. Right when you're on the brink. Of having more than you can ask or think. Something comes and gets you to think something God doesn't want you to think. All your life, all your life, even when you was a child. Because Samuel proved that you're supposed to enter into the glory even as a boy, as a little girl. Samuel, Samuel revealed that, that you're, you're really supposed to be in the spirit as a, as a toddler, as a, as a little child. I'm training Zendaya. I'm training her. The spirit world of Jesus. There are some times when Zendaya, she see me 
doing certain things, she start kind of crying. And the Lord said, son, she not crying because something's wrong. She feels fear. She feel she feels trembling. And he said, good, let it stay like that. Don't try to comfort her. I want my presence to release a fear in her very early so she understand that there's no time to waste. She will not be raised like every other child. She will serve God in her youth. Oftentimes when I see my angel show up or I see another angel visit me, I'll see her start to cry. And the Lord says she feels the presence. You can see the presence. She feels the presence. There are other times where the Lord says she sees the presence of the angel. The other days in there, I, I had on, I had on, I was doing something spiritual. And Zendaya, while she was sleeping, she was knocked out. She started saying, kata, kata, da, 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 kata, kata, da, 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 kata, kata, da, da, kata, kata, kata. For a whole minute. And then she just stopped. And the sleep just continued. She was sleep for hours more. Your atmosphere creates surgery for those around you. Your atmosphere creates surgery for those around you. Remember, Jesus even talked about how the sick need a physician. He was talking about people that's mentally sick, emotionally sick, inwardly sick. He said they need the physician. It's a bid to let you know, don't, don't look at yourself and just accept yourself the way you are. Let the Lord do more surgery on you. Just keep on going high in surgery. Some of you all have surgery scheduled for today. And you know when your surgery is scheduled, you can't let everybody in the room. You can't talk with everybody. You, you, you have to be selective of who can be around during the surgery. You, you, you can't eat certain foods when you're doing that surgery. That means that you can't be watching CNN. You can't be watching certain things on that's going to affect the surgery God is doing on you. You don't need to know what that worldly woman likes, what, what she's doing with her life, because that's not on the surgery. That food will affect your surgery. When, when you're having surgery, they tell you to eat a certain way. They tell you to sleep a certain way. They tell you, they, they, they get your permission if they can make you unconscious while you're getting surgery. The same way God, he'll make you unconscious, but he needs your permission that you'll walk by faith and not by sight. That you don't need to know everything. All you need to know is what is my dress code for my mind. Where do you want my mind, Lord? Where do you want my mind, Lord? That's all I need to know. Just the dress code. What do you want me to put on? The garment of praise. The oil of joy. 